Hi everyone, welcome to this video about making videos. I'm going to share some easy tips and tricks to help you get the most out of the videos you make for your church. As we're all getting to grips with life in lockdown and doing church remotely, we've seen some amazing versions of online church springing up all over the diocese. Now you might be ready to start thinking about making video for your own church or might want a few pointers to make your videos even better. Let's get started, shall we? Lighting. It's pretty awful having to watch and edit a video of your own face, isn't it? Here are a few tricks to make it a bit less of an ordeal. Light is either your friend or your worst enemy. Learning how to harness it is the trick. Don't film with your back to your window unless you are doing shadow puppetry. Woof! Don't film looking directly into the sun. You'll end up squinting like you've just come out of a cave. Don't light yourself from underneath. That's how they make horror films. <laughs> Do Film with natural daylight from a window lighting your face. Rearrange the furniture or scenery if necessary to get the right light. Do film outdoors in cloud cover or shady areas. If filming at night time, light your room properly. Put your ceiling light, lamps, whatever you've got, turn them on. Framing. Another quick and easy way to make your video look competent and professional is to get your framing right. Think about where you position your subject on your screen. Too far away. Too close. Too low. Just right. Keep the camera at eye level so it's like you're having a conversation one-to-one -one with your audience. Prop up your phone securely or even put it on a tripod so that this doesn't happen. <laughs> Be honest with yourself. Would you want to sit and watch your shot while you were trying to get in the right headspace for worship? If the answer is no, that's okay. Just reset up and try again. Video almost always needs to go out in landscape. I'm filming now in portrait and you get a little bit of this at the sides. So you don't want that. So make sure you turn your phone to the side and film in landscape. Setting. Think about what message your video is trying to convey when you decide what backdrop you're going to film against. If you're filming in your living room, that atmosphere is immediately intimate, friendly and informal. Remember to sit up if you're filming on your sofa though. Good posture helps you look better, but also an active stance is automatically more engaging for the viewer. A slump position sends a message to your audience. It looks defeated and careless and will make them think that this video isn't important to you or to them. If you're filming in your study, it might be worth checking what's on the shelves behind you. You might not want people to see your private photos of friends and family or your amusing objects that you've collected on holiday. Stacks of paperwork and wonky books are actually quite stressful to look at. If your shelves are unsalvageable, why not move your camera around and focus on a less cluttered corner? Dress your set. Make the space ordered, attractive and welcoming. Sound. Use a microphone to improve the audio quality of your video. You can buy a microphone that plugs into your phone's headphone socket online for less than £50. Add subtitles to your video before you post it online to ensure that it is accessible to all of your potential audience. And I think it goes without saying that you should enunciate, stick to an accessible vocabulary and get your point across or speak slowly and clearly. Lens. Just wipe it. Trust me, you're going to be amazed. Mm -hmm. Presenting style. This area is all about showing your personality. We're not news readers or presenters. We are the church and we have something completely unique to offer. If you, like me, have resting worried face, or resting any other kind of face for that matter, try to keep reminding yourself to smile. Smiling lifts a video like you wouldn't believe. It conveys enthusiasm, confidence in what is being said, and welcome. A whopping 55% of communication is transmitted through body language. Only 7% is given through your actual words, and 38% through your tone. Take on the videos that play to your strengths. Remember your audience. 
Can you tailor your presenting style to who is likely to be watching? Is the video for children? Mm. Is it for your youth group? I'm, I'm just really sorry. Is it for your regular Sunday worshippers? Morning everyone! Or a welcome message for newcomers? The beginning and the end. If you're going to go live, try to create smooth beginnings and endings to your video. Don't clatter into shot or spend the first few minutes shuffling papers and ignoring your viewers while you wait for people to join you. You can make small talk, welcome new arrivals, smile and generally appear welcoming. This is particularly important for any newcomers. People who know you well will have more patience with you, but newcomers need to feel assured that they're in good company and safe hands. If you're making a pre-recorded video, make sure to leave a nice three second pause at the beginning and end of your recording so that you've got some space to do some editing. It does feel quite awkward staring at yourself like this. It can be jarring when videos end too quickly or when the presenter lunges towards the off button immediately after the amen. Amen. Ooh. Content. As to what you actually do in your video, that is entirely up to you. Don't feel pressured to replicate your usual church service online. Try to offer something unique and fresh that will act as a complement to your in-church services when we can finally resume those. Now, how do you switch this thing off? Thank you.